Welcome to Our Talent. I'm Juan Carlos Vera. I've been teaching classical guitar at Miami Dade College for the past 25 years. The great Manuel Barreco joins us today for the entire show. Described as the most important guitar player of the last 100 years, his influence raised standards of guitar playing to new heights all over the world. Barreco's first recordings already showed distinctive trademarks. In them, melodies flowed with purpose and direction, maybe even necessity. No effort was spared in distinguishing accompaniments from melodic material. An uncanny sensitivity to changes in the emotional content of a piece led to precise adjustments in mood at exactly the right moment. Each note had a clear function and each phrase a proper place. For the first time, listeners were led literally by the hand, but more so by thought, to experience by themselves and no longer doubt the greatness of composers like Albanis and Granados, to which other guitarists could only hint at. But the realization was twofold and reflected equally on the remarkable musician who awakened it. Delivered with impeccable skill, Barreco's technique was not just daring, but fearless. The New York Times soon afterwards described him as a superior musician, and the rest is history. Welcome, Manuel. Thanks for uh, Thank so taking much. time from your busy schedule to join us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, it's funny, <coughs> but uh, you must be the only one in the guitar world who has not had the pleasure of attending a Manuel Barreco concert. You're always working when they happen. The, have you been able to uh, articulate the basis of your incredible uh, acceptance by the public? Well, f first of all, I'm, I'm very flattered by, by, by that description there, uh, you know, and um, thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, well, you know, I mean, it's been a long time, so, so, so there have been times where I do wonder why this, why that, why, this, why did this happen, you know. But, it, but I, I have something that, that I, it's the way I teach also, which I'm always looking for, for, uh, how we can make, how we can do things better, you know? So that's, that's usually where I'm focused, you know? So, so I usually, if you ask, for example, about my concerts or recordings, I usually remember the things that didn't come out well, you know? Yeah. And, and not the things that, get, that came out well. So now, you know, now that it's been a long time, I am able more to, 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 you to have listen evolved. back. You have evolved, uh, everything you do is, is based on a, and trying to get better and improving. It's just the, the, it's, like I tell my students, it's, it's the only uh, the only way I know how to make things better. You know? Placido Domingo, the uh, tenor, used to say that uh, the public knows whom whom it chooses, even though uh, we don't know why, but they know. And uh, and uh, the the those artists that are selected is uh, due to the wisdom of the public. Would you uh, agree with that? I think it, it could be that, it could mm -hmm. be that, could, uh, I think probably is, uh, I'm, I'm not thinking of myself now, but when I think of others, yeah, I think it's, are those that somehow manage to communicate, you know, and engage the audiences that, that probably go forward, yeah. The, Manuel, your, your notes are imbued with meaning, uh, whereas with other players, notes seem to be on the trivial variety sometimes. How do you infuse your notes with that kind of significance? I heard a story once, I don't know if it's true, that, that Segovia had said that you could, you could tell an artist with one note. And uh, what I think he might have meant was that only, only, only an artist could produce certain notes. Now, that has nothing to do with, <laughs> with what I do, but what I do try to do always is, is to, to try to find the, the job and the intensity and the feeling of each note in a piece of music, how they fit in together as a puzzle. 
Does playing with a, a high uh, action guitar, high tension strings, uh, does that contribute to the charging up or intensifying of notes? If you were to remove some of that, would, would you deflate some, some of these aspects? Uh, as far as I can tell, I, 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 I don't think it has much to do with it, mm -hmm. at least from, from my end of it. I mean, I think we should, uh, we, should, we should play, our instrument should be as playable as possible, yeah. as, as easy to play as possible. So we don't have to waste energy in just playing the instrument, but more into the music. And I guess just simply talking about high action, you know, high tension strings, I mean, it, it has its good and a bad side, I think. The good side, I think, is like it can extract more, more sound out of the instrument, you know, but, but I think it also, it has less sustain. The strings stop vibrating sooner, so it doesn't last as long, so. Going back to your early years, uh, the fairy tale goes that Aaron Shearer, your teacher, straightened you out and taught you everything you know. But in reality, you ended up with him purely by chance, and you didn't even see much of him at that. Did Aaron Shearer teach you, or did you teach Aaron Shearer, Manuel? <laughs> well, no, no, that, 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 no, I mean, that, that, no. <laughs> uh, it doesn't go we, we have, No, but the, the, the truth is that I, I learned a lot from him. But it, it, was, it was a very confrontational kind of relation. Well, not confrontation, confrontation from my side of it, but he certainly viewed me that way. I mean, I mean, I, I had, I always said what I thought, you know, and 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 I was perhaps even insensitive to to some people in the process, you know. But and uh, and and because of that, sometimes we bumped heads, you know. And uh, and what did happen is that on on my last year, he finally got fed up with me and he threw me out of his class. But uh, but that wasn't like on the fourth year. And uh, but oddly enough, after that. You know, we actually, of all the students, I, I, I was the one that, that, that had a, a longer lasting relationship with him mm -hmm. because I, you know, I mean, I, I was never really angry at him, even when he threw me out. I mean, I remember telling him, I understand, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you throw. The, but you said you went home and found your sound because you didn't like the sound that he was uh, uh, promoting. Right. It, it, doesn't that involve a certain element of being self-taught? Well, that's, yes, and, and, and but also, also, I mean, uh, he has a teacher, he provoked those changes in me. For example, I think that's a great example. Because what happened was that uh, he was trying to teach me to, how to play breast stroke, you know, free strokes, more of, but I didn't like the sound that he had. So I came up with a different sound, you know. But that I would not have done that if it had not been because he had made these comments that he wanted me to have a good free stroke sound. So it really was a combination of, of I mean, I don't think a teacher necessarily needs to, to, to be somebody who, who, who exactly tells who the students the what answers. to do. But I think also to stimulate the, the student to thinking. I mean, uh, I think my own experience, some of the best teachers that I had, not only in guitar, but other things, other ones, they had a point of view. And I had to deal with that. You know, a fighter or accepted or whatever. And, and in that sense, even though I don't think that was his intention, I think his intention was for me to do blindly whatever he said, that was the result. Yeah. You know? So you, you uh, would you say, I guess you would not say that uh, you got to the level that you got uh, in spite of your teachers, but to some degree because of them. Yes, I mean, they, they, actually the way I have described it was if I had to do it all over again, I would probably go study with him again and I would probably fight with him again. <laughs> you know, I, I, th I think that worked for me, you know. Uh, now we're going to watch uh, Manuel perform uh, an amazing arrangement of uh, Catalonia transcribed from the piano by Manuel Barroico and we'll be back in a moment.
Be the solution. Be connected. Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami Dade College. Welcome back. Again, the uh, great Manuel Barroco joins us today for a special show. We just saw a performance of uh, Catalonia, an amazing performance of Catalonia. Manuel, how could you possibly have, have uh, thought that Catalonia could ever be played on the guitar and much less played as amazingly as you ultimately did? Well, uh, thank you again. <laughs> you know, um, I, I still remember. I still remember making making that that arrangement, and you know something that's f you know kind of funny in a way is that that part in the middle that it, that it is kind of famous for the high yeah. notes and on top and and you know actually in the original it's the reverse. Yes, it's it's on on, on the exactly. bass, you know, for the, for the guitar. I mean, basically this is what going to. That's play why the I bass. say it's more an arrangement than a transcription. Yeah, no, it it is. You know, I mean, yeah, it also depends on what the definition of the word is. You know, I mean, people use it differently, but but. Uh, you never know what's going to work out, and th that piece worked out really well. Did you remember the first time you played that? Was what? Uh, did you notice a special reaction on the art by the uh, audience? Uh, I actually don't remember the very first time. I, I don't. Did uh, Did you have to work on that uh, for a long time before you played it in public? I still do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually playing it now again. And you know it, it gets scarier with with time, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it must be one of your more most uh, requested uh, pieces. It, it, uh, well, yeah, it, it seems like seems like a lot of people appreciate that piece, you know. After seeing the uh, these kinds of performance, Manuel, is that why you say that the guitar is on the verge of being impossible? <laughs> I think the guitar is really difficult. I think it's a really difficult instrument to play as a solo instrument. You know, when you're playing melody accompanied by, by yourself, it's really hard. Uh, I can see, for example, sometimes I, I play with a f friend or a flute player, and you know, and you come into rehearsal and you've been working so hard on your part, and they come in and say, "Well, where is the music? They never seen it before." And so it, it, it lets you know the effort that one needs to make before before those encounters. But it's also a, an extremely beautiful instrument. I think. Are there are there moments when you uh, come in on stage and you say, how am I going to get through this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not only playing in life, also, you know, you know yes. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Uh, for sure, for sure. I mean, this is not something that I do easily. I don't think I, I, don't think I was made for this, you know. <laughs> I don't think that this is my personality, but, but so often you it's like You mean the, these kinds of performances in public uh, that require so much of you? The, uh, and for me, the, it's difficult to do it, and, and I, you know, it's, 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 it's very, it can be very, very intense and draining and, and scary, and yeah. In the, one of the old films, uh, Andres Segovia, the legendary guitarist, says that he began playing guitar long before he was born in his usual poetic way, based on what we know of, uh, know of uh, gene theory. He might have been fr uh, prophetic on that. Were you also irresistibly drawn to the guitar when you first started? I did. I, 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 I fell in love with it when, when, when I was a kid, and I, w and I would dream about it. Let me go back to the, la to the, the thing before. I'm afraid I'm being negative, and when I said it's so difficult to do it. On the other hand, the, you know, there are, some, there are some days that the fingers do everything you want them to do, and some days that they just don't want to do it. But when you're having a great day, and you're playing in a beautiful hall, 
you know, and you're playing well, the fingers are doing the right thing, and you have a great audience. I mean, this is this, this is really this is a really beautiful experience when you feel that everybody's with you, listening, and and all of a sudden your feelings are very much, you know, vibrant that that day, and you can just begin to throw this. A lot of them. positive on that. Oh, you that can, probably that can end be, up on a high after. That can be well. It's just it's just very beautiful yeah. uh, uh, to to do that. Segovia used to say that his his bones would shake before a concert, and after the concert he wanted to do it again. <laughs> want to play it again? I, I can understand. Uh, I can understand that feeling. Yeah. Uh, Freddie Mercury, the uh, great lead singer from the uh, rock and roll band, uh, who incidentally had been a talented classical pianist in his youth, said that he couldn't sing anything unless he knew exactly how he would phrase it. You have said exactly the same thing. I wonder what you thought of uh, Freddie Mercury's uh, singing. Well, you know, it's, I, I didn't know him all that well, you know. I mean, it's been later on in life that I have discovered some things in rock that, 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 I, that I didn't so much before. I mean, I was a huge Beatles fan. Uh, and, you know, another group I really liked was Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I really liked them a lot. But when I was... But in, and also, for example, the Beach Boys. I used to hate them. And then recently, recently, in the last few years, I've been hearing some of the songs. I think they're so beautiful. Some of the harmony, some of the, and with Queen it's sort of similar that, that, that way. Did you hear the recording that uh, Freddie Mercury did with Montserrat Caballé, the opera singer? No, no I never have. It's no. a wonderful the recording. They had a strong mutual ad, ad, admiration. That shocked uh, a lot of people. Uh, yeah, but uh, it makes sense to me what you're saying, because, mm -hmm. because that, that explains some of his singing. It has sort of like a classical feel to it. Um, and what I said really famous, the, the Rhapsody, the... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that helps great so obviously. Great composition, too. Yeah, and obviously it has a classical influence in it. The, is it true that you originally wanted to, uh, you were, were looking to form a rock band as a teenager? Well, I tried that, for That would shock people. <laughs> I did try for a while, but I mean, I failed miserably, you know I mean? I, di <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, uh, you know, and uh, it's, a different, it's, a different, it's a different thing. I it's mean, like a different instrument. It's a, a different thing. It's a different field you have, you have to know. Just because you play classical, I mean, you yeah. can do rock well, yeah. and it's a different thing. You seldom mention Juan Mercadal, uh, the great Cuban guitarist. And you spent a short time with him, maybe six months, taking lessons. Uh, did he influence you in any way? Yes, he did. You know, more than six months. It was, almost, it was almost a year. But it was a really happy relationship with him. I had heard of him all my life. And I remember having lessons with, with him and being so proud that, that he was working with this man that I heard of my life. But he, he, was, he was very warm. He, and um, I think with Shear, for example, I end up talking more about him. Maybe it is because there was conflict. There was no conflict with Mercadal at all. I mean, it was all, it was all pleasant with him. You know, he put a lot of emphasis on on uh, on, uh, on singing. And I think, by the way, that, that 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 as a player, when it comes to singing with the instrument, he was way ahead. Of, of, uh, of just about everybody at the time. He's, and he had a very, very personal style, which, which, which was very much about singing with the instrument. I was talking to his son the other day, and uh, he remembers you going to, to his house, and uh, he said he was amazing back then, Manuel Barreco. You, uh, you mentioned uh, Mercadal's recording, Juan Mercadal at Vizcaya. You right. said that uh, it was some of the best playing you had heard uh, in your life. Do you think that uh, the... Uh, more people should uh, hear that recording, which is now available. No, I mean, I think every guitar should hear. There, there, there are certain things in there. For example, the, the, the Brower Prelude the, that he plays, that I, I think that shows you know, so yeah. much singing and imagination, the, w the way he does it. Yeah. And even this, the Sevilla and the Handel Sonata, I mean, it's really, it's really, and also the, the, uh, the uh, well, all of it, really, all of it, it it's, it's very musical and, and mystical, just very singing. It's, quite, yeah. it's an, uh, quite amazing that uh, just about every, every, every uh, recording, every piece on that record is just um, a masterpiece of performance mm. in, in, uh, in terms of interpretation. Right, yeah. It's a very unique and, and, uh, and musical gu guitar. It's one of the most I've ever heard, yeah. Uh, now we're going to uh, watch another performance of uh, Manuel Barreco. We'll be back in a moment.
creative. Be a hero. Be the solution. Be connected. Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami Dade College. Welcome back to the show again. We're uh, with the great guitar players, uh, player Manuel Barroico, one of the great guitar players of all time. Manuel uh, Rubinstein, the legendary pianist, said that he didn't have many musicians' friends because they didn't read books, and he was a voracious reader. Where do you fall on that? Are you, uh, do you read books often? Are you a reader? Actually, no, I cannot say that I am. You know, I, I, I read some, but, but it's, uh, and I usually go into, into binges of, of uh, for example, there, there, was, there was a time that I was doing uh, Garcia Marquez, and another time it was Dostoyevsky, and then I got into um, Herman Hesse, I got into him, and then I was into Kafka for a while. But it's like for a while, and then it's sort of, I don't, I don't do much reading for so a while. So you've read literature, you were? No, I, I did, I, yeah, I did some of my own. I don't know how much of it I understood. Mm -hmm. But but it's not. I'm not one of those people that you know. I'm not. I'm not really. You know. I, I haven't read all that much. No. The uh, Claudia Rao, the Chilean pianist, uh, said it would take him months to uh, recover from mistakes made in a concert. Have you ever gone through that type of thing? <laughs> I still have nightmares about some mistakes that I made. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember them now. Oh, yeah. The, uh, as I said before, you know, I remember the mistakes much more clearly than, than the good things, yeah. The uh, Rao says that uh, when he made a mistake, he, mentally he would stop. Even though he kept playing, he had given up in a way. Does that ever occur? Well, I mean, we're also, we're also professionals. I mean, we are, we are out there to, to do a job, and if we make a mistake, we, we, we just have to accept that we did. It's our fault. It's nobody else's, you know, just... just Accept it and go on and try to keep trying the best that you can. I mean, just try to make sure another another one doesn't happen right after that. I mean, that, I mean, I, I don't think it's any point to 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 complain or feel sorry for yourself at that moment. Just just deal with it and go on. But even the best playing is made up of um, constant or uh, imperfections, impurities that the audience might not detect, but which on close observation would be detected. Now, isn't that the case? Yeah. And sometimes it takes a big mistake to realize how well you play the rest of the time. <laughs> you know, I, feel, I remember one, one, one concert in New York in Lincoln Center many years ago, and I bet it, one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made right at the beginning. But part of the reason why I remember that is because nothing went wrong from that moment on. <laughs> you know, so sometimes, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes, for example, uh, if you're always playing with a beautiful sound, people may not realize how beautiful the sound is until you have a bad sound. They get, they get used to they the got, quality. Then they, yeah, then they can compare mm. it. Yeah. In the, the 1920s, uh, the great pianists, the great musicians of the world had a different mentality of mistakes, and many routinely made mistakes. The, was that a healthier attitude uh, than today's circus atmosphere uh, mentalities and well, you know, high I wire think, uh, Yeah, well, you know, I think w t today the level, I think, of, s of everything is so much higher. I mean... I think the guitarists today are so much better. The pianists today are, you know, so much. But there's not really mystery about playing any anymore. Even I was commenting, like, you know, we've been watching this, this some of the series on television. The acting is so good. I mean, now it's, 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 everything is so good. So the competition is higher. Also, everything is a lot more produced. You know, m maybe before, if you look at some of the talking about rock, you know, th these guys singing, they, they look like a bunch of amateurs. And now it's all produced, and they're dancing, and they're jumping, and they're, you know. So, so, uh, so, the, so the level is, is, is higher, the pressure is so, and also the recordings I know are, are, are so edited that it has nothing to do much with reality. But that's what we listen to, that's what, that's what people are expecting, and that puts a lot of pressure on the players to, 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 to mm -hmm. reach that level. And perhaps because of that, the, 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 the level keeps going higher, but it's, it's, uh, what it's the bad side of that is that sometimes I think uh, too much emphasis is put on that perfection instead of the uh, the uh, the communication, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, yeah, it would have been. I, I imagine it would have been easier back then, you know, not to not not to have this incredible pressure, you know. 
Manuel, uh, are you aware uh, or conscious of your fashion or wardrobe as uh, making a statement? For example, the uh, daring floor shine boots or the rebel like beard that uh, you were known uh, for. Was that a. Uh, was there only awareness? When, only when people laughed at me later. That's when I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I actually remember one, one, the boots one, one time. I was in Paris, actually, and, and I had played there, and the guy said, What's, what's this with the boots? You know, because I had a, to, a, a tuxedo or something. Uh, you know, uh, and I guess, yes, also, you know, because I mean, I, wa I was, I mean, I said before about the Beatles, I mean, I was a huge fan, and, and I. There was a lot of influence in, in me, though, even from the from the rock world, even if it was in, in the in the music. So, yeah, I was aware in a way that, yeah. But I mean, I wasn't trying to make it. I don't know if I was trying. Are to. you aware of any data that shows uh, floor shine boots uh, sales went up after you started uh, <laughs> performing? <laughs> Incidentally, I have my own in honor of my of my or, today. Or down, I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 they may have gone down after that. I don't know. The uh, Manuel, you worked with. Uh, Placido Domingo, the, again the great tenor, on the Concierto de Aranjuez, a very popular uh, recording. Was it intimidating to work with uh, a larger-than-life figure? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He was. But he was very nice. I mean, and actually, as as a conductor, he took a lot of care of, of the soloists of me. In that, you know, I mean, I never had uh, anybody be so careful not, not not to make me work too hard. You know, not to tire me out. I guess because he's a singer, you understand. You understand that, but he was very nice to to not only to me but to the orchestra, to 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 everybody working there. If if I can go a little bit yes, more broadly, the, the 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 most impressive moment for me was we recorded some songs together, and in later on in, in in New York is part of that recording, and I remember sitting there like at midnight to to re, to record the things, and I do the introduction, and then he starts to sing, and I said, "Oh my God, listen to that voice," you know. You know, like if there goes a neighborhood, <laughs> you know. And then afterwards, he, at that time, I don't know if he has a, still he had a, 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 a restaurant in New York, and he took us all out. You know, everybody working there. You know, so he he was it was a very f warm figure. You know, did he understand the uh, more limited dynamic range of the guitar? Uh, he's very lyrical, and his dynamic yeah. range is uh, extensive. Did, did he understand that that the guitar is a different? Uh, oh, he must have. He must have. But he liked it. In the songs, I think we ended up recording four, and we only needed to do three, and he wanted to do more, you know. So I think he really enjoyed the intimacy of just sitting, you know, in, in, you know, in a small room with just one guitar and not, not having to force anything. And I think he enjoyed that. Great. And now uh, we going to come back, play uh, some more Manuel Barroico, and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Thank you. 
creative. Be a hero. Be the solution. Be connected. Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami Dade College. Welcome back to our talent. Again, our special guest today, Manuel Barroico, one of the great legends in the guitar world. Manuel, would, would you uh, define your initial style when you started playing as authentic, as devoid of uh, tricks or gimmicks? I don't know if it was at the beginning, but I, 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 at some point, I, I really did want to play in a way that, that didn't have any gimmicks, you know, that, that it was just, just, I would call it honest, meaning that, that what I was really feeling and thinking is what hopefully would come out and not pretending to feel more or less than, than, than I was actually feeling at the time. I mean, I, 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 th I think of it as, as, as being, I call it honest. It's not that the one is necessarily dishonest, but just that exactly what I feel, no more, no less. But you didn't feel comfortable with the mannerisms of the time uh, in guitar playing? Um, no, no, I, I, I had had enough of it, you know, and, and uh, I, I, I also thought it was important to have, to have a, a voice that would be different with it. And, and, <clears throat> and it just kind of happened naturally by going in this direction. What I wanted to do basically is, is I wanted to play the guitar by the same rules and you know, same, you know as, as uh, other instrumentalists in the classical field, you know, being pianists, violinists, and that's where I went. You know, and, and a lot of my ideas you know, came from, 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 from that field. You know? well, did that, uh, going back to Mercadal, because that's, Mercadal had that same sentiment, did that uh, also uh, had a its roots on well yeah he put a lot of a lot of a lot of emphasis on singing you know and, and that was that was something that I to this day I, I still I still do and I, and I and I try to teach it yeah I remember him singing everything he played yeah. uh, I, I made I interviewed him about 25 years ago and uh, and I had a lot of contact with him and I remember that type of thing the uh, Manuel the uh, with uh, continuing with the same uh, topic, uh, the guitar sound back then was it too sweet and idyllic for your own taste? Mm. Maybe, but but I think it was also because of the times. You know, uh, 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 at that time when I was studying uh, people in the conservatory, at that time, you know, with with all the, the modern music and serial music and everything that was going on and John Cage and Schoenberg and it, word, words like beauty seem to be like bad words, you know, and and uh, and that was not like the number one thing that I, that I was that I was after, you know, and and it was actually having worked with a Japanese composer Toru Takemitsu that that he when, when we had a, we had a long relationship, but he always spoke about beauty, and that that changed me, you know, that changed me when this man all he was talking about was the beauty in the music, and you know, and I wanted to tell him, don't you know that beauty is strong, you know. And, <laughs> Whereas of course it's not. So that made you the re rethink the, uh, yes, the, the the whole nature of the activity. It, it did, it did. And which is well, actually what is happening right now. I mean, music is not as academic, the classical music, you know, as it was before. And, and in the process, you know, we lost some audience and now people are desperately trying to, to, to get him back. Did the, uh, did the sound of the Robert Rock guitar that you, you, you played for many years, Robert Rock, the, uh, the well-known American guitar maker, did uh, that guitar's more neutral sound set you apart from uh, the Fleta and the Ramirez's uh, crowd at the time? Well, I didn't play Ramirez or Fleta, so I didn't have much of a point of, of reference. You know, in, in, in fact, it, the, 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 we're finishing a book that, that somebody's writing about that guitar, and, and, and basically it turns out that was really the first guitar that I had, you know, because before, before that was just borrowed guitars, you know, whether in Cuba or here, one guitar that, you know, Tony Arce here locally sent me, or, or Rey de la Torre, who also told you he also sent me a guitar. 
I just, I don't know that I would call it neutral, neutral sounding. Maybe it is. I just never thought of it that way. But you know? he didn't have the personality of the uh, very distinct personality that people knew uh, and associated with the Spanish. I guitars. wouldn't have known that because I didn't know that much about guitars <laughs> at the time. Hon honestly, would you I tell the story how how you picked up that guitar? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think uh, Tony Arce sent me a, a, you know, a friend, Tony Arce, here in Miami, and unfortunately passed. And, and he, uh, he sent me a letter one time saying that this is guy here, Robert Rock, and he's building these guitars, and everybody's burning the guitars and buying his. He didn't say burning. So it so happened that my, my, my sister and a friend were coming down to Miami, so I came down, and I, and I went to, to, to see Rock. And, and he had this guitar, and I, I just I thought it was the most beautiful guitar I'd ever heard in my, in my life. And so, so I told him, I want to buy it. And he said, well, you can't, I can't sell it to you because it's an experiment. I'll build you one. I said, no, 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 this one. <laughs> And he, he, he was kind enough that he... And you yeah. made it fame, you made him famous ultimately because of that. Well, if that's what happened, that would be great. But, <laughs> but I, think that, like, I, I always thought that that, that, was, that was an amazing instrument. Did you add uh, the Agustin Regal basses to add character to the sound of, the, of that guitar? Was there a, a something lacking in a way that you were trying to compensate for? I think, well, I, I always thought that the guitar sounded good with Augustines. You know, I mean, that, that was my feeling, you know, I mean, I, and I had tried some others, not all that many strings, but, but uh, I mean, at that time, you know, I don't think there were as many as there are now, or maybe there were, but, but I always thought Augustine seemed to be right for that guitar. I mean, I think the strings the, need to match the instrument, you know. But the those player. basses have a lot of personality, they like the richness that yeah. uh, it, it's hard to find in other in other in other brands well i think from having liked rock music a lot back then i think that yeah, i like big basses you know i mean i mean and, I'm, and i mean that seriously i think we grew up with these recordings with a big bass and and for me at that time that was important well i think when you started playing for the first time we heard real basses which were up to that point not uh, prominent enough in pieces we started to hear real uh, voices coming out that otherwise uh, were not uh, picked up by players. Your basses really stood up. We could yeah. hear the melody. Well, this is, this is the first conversation ever I have about this subject. No, nobody mentioned that before. So, so I, I never, it never occurred to me how it would be heard from the outside. But I, now that you mention it, you know, that, that, that's what I was well, trying to Well, it's clear do. in things like the, the prelude and Bax music, uh, where it's so important to bring out the voices in your playing, they can be clearly heard. I try to make the voices clear. To me, that, that clarity in general, that's important to me. That, that things are, 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 are clear, are clear, easy to understand, you know. So clarity. All clarity, right. clarity of the idea as well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. Clarity of the idea as well, clarity of everything, you know. Bringing everything out. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, we're going to watch another great uh, clip of Manuel Barbaco performing and we'll be back in a moment. Be creative. Be a 
hero. Be the solution. Be connected. Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami Dade College. Welcome back once again to our talent. I'm Juan Carlos Vera, and we're pleased to have uh, one of the great players in the world with us today, Manuel Barroico. Manuel, uh, does the uh, meticulous planning required to perform accurately on the classical guitar, can that ever be reconciled with improvisation? I, I don't see why not. I don't, I don't see why not. I guess it depends on on, 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 on the player and how it's done, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I would imagine if one is improvising, the, the level of risk raises, you know, so therefore there, there might be less. You don't see I any contradictory. Uh, well, I, it also depends, on, it, it depends on, on, on the risk factor also of the player, how far away they're going to go and, you know, uh, the chances they might take. But, uh, Do you but think material would have to be simplified? Because polyphonically, ch it, it might be. Uh, Beyond the, the well, we're, we're talking about control. Yeah, we're talking about all the pl all the planning that goes into preparing yeah. a piece for your performances. Yeah. All the elaborate work. Uh, if you had to break out of the script, and yeah. the isn't there a, a some some contradiction in the in those two philosophies or views? Yeah, although, although I can imagine some people could be comfortable with both. I mean, I think if, if traditionally, I think when we're playing classical music, it's, it's uh, something that has been written and, and we're trying to present it in, in what we see as the best way possible and the most beautiful, the most convincing, the most, you know, uh, uh, accurate way possible. You know, and so all this work could, goes towards that, you know, I mean, here's that piece. And then this, there are other ways to do it, which is once you have assimilated that, you know, how else could you have done it? Which I imagine is the is the is the uh, is the uh, the idea of improvisation. That you know, at one point, if you write in a book, you, you put the last period and that's the end. But if you if you don't have improvisation, you know that it also could have ended this way or that way, or you could have named this guy a different name. You know, uh, but I guess it depends on how far one one wants to go with it. Also. With the style, because for example, in, in, in Baroque music and classical, you know, like most of them, these guys improvise. Yeah, well, Bach uh, could improvise preludes yeah. on the spot. So, in many ways, I think they were even perhaps even closer to jazz musicians today, to, to, mm. to the classical musician that is just trying to reproduce something that, that, that was written before. The, uh, in uh, 1978, you finished second in the uh, controversial guitar, Toronto guitar competition, even though everyone knew you had really won it. Did John Duarte, who voted against you, did he do that because you showed up in jeans and sandals? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I j I, or maybe that's what he thought. Maybe he thought I should be second. I don't, I well, don't I, know I have it in good word that he did. Uh, some uh, Al Kunzi who did research yeah. work, he traveled to England in, in, uh, and he says he, his wife never forgave him for uh, having voted against you. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, uh, I, you know, I mean, I did play there, and I and I, and I, and I remember wearing sandals with no no socks on, and and I know, and 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 the afro the, si the size of like a basketball, like this, that's what Bob Rock also, you know, described. You know, and and uh, honestly, it was more stupidity than anything else. You know, I mean, honest to God, it was just being just. Not thinking about it. I remember mm -hmm. competing there, and Elliot Fish was playing, and Elliot came out with the ball tiny, and I said, Oh my God, you know, where but am I? That's typical, Elliot. Well, you know, but <laughs> what, what I'm saying, somebody might think I was trying to be different. Maybe I was, but it wasn't such a big thing. I think mostly just, just, just stupidity, you know. I want to say something before, I, I, you know, before we run out of time. I just want to congratulate you on the work that you're doing here. Sure. You know, I mean, I saw, I saw, uh, I saw the show, and I was really taken by by what you're doing with the young kids, and and that's the kind of work that that I that I uh, I, I really appreciate. I've I've done just enough to to realize that it's a special work 
you know, and, uh, and I just want to say that, that you know, it, Thank it's you, great that you're doing that. I wish more people would do it, so, you know, they, and they will reach more, more kids and they would, you know, enrich their lives with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Do you feel comfortable uh, teaching uh, little kids? I, 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 I don't so much, you know, because I think it's a, I'm, I'm comfortable with them. And, and I like it, and I can, you know, sit with them and have a good time with them. But that's different than from to guiding them, you know, and taking them on to, 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 you know. I mean, I can have a nice time with them, and I like, you know. Uh, and and I realize a long term is a, is, a, is, a, is a specialty. I mean, I love teaching in general, but I'm much more I'm, I'm much more used to an older older crowd, you know. I mean, the, you know, the college age. And Manuel, which was your best concert? Oh boy. My best. I'll tell you the ones I come to head, I don't know if I don't know if it was my, my best. But for some reason and, and tomorrow will be a different one, what's coming to head is playing the, the Aranjuez and it was in the Bronx in London, you know, I mean and uh, I was like dying, you know, I mean it's like I don't know how big the place, like five thousand or seven. Who was the conductor? I forget his name. Mm -hmm. Right now, I don't remember. But I remember that that he came out like if I the way I remember it's sort of like spotless. You know, it was just just came out really well that day. Uh, maybe because I said London. You know, I mean, I remember the first time I played there, Wigmore Hall, and because you know, I mean, John Williams was there, and I had never met him before. You know, and, and you know, and luckily I only saw him towards the end of the concert because if I had seen him at the beginning, I probably you would have died <laughs> and run out of the place. But but by the by the time I saw him, he sort of moved up to the front uh, toward in the second half, and, and by that time, I, I, I mean I was relaxed, so <laughs> it didn't. But he was very nice. But you and said that you you felt that the audience that the uh, London audience was knowledgeable. You felt uh, well. They have great audiences over there. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic place for music. I mean, they they they, uh, they they enjoy all kinds of music, you know, and and they have great musicians. You know, I don't know how many symphony orchestras and. And the great halls, and it's fantastic. For was the German uh, public difficult uh, in, in your mind in, in the, for the, sa the same reasons? Is that I highly educated uh, musically? I find the German public also great, you know, and, and also very enthusiastic, you know. I mean, it's sort of like if one didn't know, for example, if you go to uh, a place like Germany or, 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 or maybe one Latin country like Spain or Italy or something, you would think that the reaction in these other places would be much bigger, but the Germans, are, I find, is much more enthusiastic and much more out there. Maybe they're more confident in the reactions. I don't know what it is. But that's also, I mean, that's a great country also for music because they have all these great halls. Everything is really well organized and everything is of really high quality. I, it's really fantastic for music, too. Manuel, you showed up. Uh late for a meeting with the uh, legendary Andres, uh, guitarist Andres Segovia. Was that symbolic of what you thought of him at the time? Oh, it's symbolic of the stupidity that I mentioned before. <laughs> and uh, and uh, because it happened roughly around the same time as, as when I showed up, you know, with, with the... No, 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 it was not, it was... I've gotten better, but it's not difficult for me to be late for something. But what some peop people are never late may not realize is I hate being late. It just, it just, I, I, my biggest mistake is that I think every everything takes five minutes. You know, so yeah, we're gonna go there, we're gonna do five minutes, five minutes, and it's not five minutes. And like a friend told me, nothing takes five minutes. So, so I'm much better. No, no, but I was, I, I was, I was embarrassed. You know, I mean, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I felt awful that I was late. For what me. did he say to you? In he terms was of very the nice. The he was mm -hmm. very nice. He. Uh, I don't know how, many, how much detail you want me to go into, but, but, but uh, he, he uh, I went in, Michael Lorimer, the guitarist, American guitarist, Michael uh, int introduced me to him, he said, would you like to meet Segovia? He was in New York, you know, and, and I said, well, of course I do. So, so I went and, and, and Segovia was in his robe, you know, I mean, he, and uh, Maybe I should. I mean, we, we could be here talking about this for a while. No, no, but, go ahead. But, well, basically, <laughs> well, basically what happens is he asked me to, to uh, to play something, and I, th I, the first thing was Prelude by Bach. He says, you know, he said your fingers are very, very docile. You know, you have very good fingers. So, you know, 
But just you should do more of the music. He said, you should dwell more on the dissonances. You should not listen to critics. And, and that was funny because uh, apparently he was not in a good mood because he had been given a very bad review, you know. But he said, you should, no, you should do more. And I think I know what he wants. So I started playing. And he said, yeah, yes, like that. That's, that's good. I'm like, OK, we'll play something else. And I played the, um, the third uh, Granados dance that he had never heard. I he oh, that's, what, you know, that's nice. You know, he said, your fingers. He said, they're very, they're very docile, your fingers, you know. You're well known for that. <laughs> well, but, but and, and then yeah. he said, uh, he said, wait a minute. He said, you know, where, where are you from? And he said, well, you know, I was, I'm Cuban, you know. I said, I said, don't you compose also? And I said, no, no. And, and Laurie Mercer he said, well, my answer, you're probably thinking of Leo Brown. Or he said, oh, OK. He said, well, so, OK, so play something else. And I, then I began Sevilla. And he said, it's too fast. He said, it's too fast. You know? He said, well, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't mean to say, well, imagine if you had tried to go fast. No, no, too fast. You know? then you go. And then, you know, and, and then that was it. And, and, um, and uh, he had also, he had stepped, something happened to his toe. He could barely walk, and he, and he wanted to. Uh, to walk me to the door and say, please don't, just say, you know, you know. but he insisted on doing that. And, and at the end of the, at the door, he, he, uh, he said something like, you know, well, I, I hope you become one of the, you know, I remember this gesture, one of the great guitarists or so on. He, re he recognized the, what well, he uh, I, I don't know, what, what, uh, uh, I, I mentioned my stupidity, I could give you many examples. <laughs> but for example, with that, you know, I, uh, at, that, at that time, everybody was trying to get a letter from Segovia. And they wanted to, you know, I wanted to do it on my, on my own. So I never tried to see him again. I never asked him for anything. I didn't follow up. I, I, I just, I did, I did, stupidly, I didn't want that. I just, I just, just wanted to do it myself. Has your playing mellowed more in the uh, Segovia direction in the last it's years? It's moved a little bit in that direction. Mm -hmm. and, and I think by, by, by that, the reason is that, that, uh, if my playing was more rational, I mean, his probably was more into the, 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 the beauties or the mysteries of the instrument in a way. And now I realize how important that is. The poetic, uh, as he offs often. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's not that it wasn't poetry in the other way, but, but, uh, but, um, but I, I think there was something that he was doing that I totally did not see. And now I think I'm, I'm, but not, I mean, not with, not, not losing the, the other way, but combining them, I think. I hope. Manuel, does a player of your caliber ever forget how to play? Are there moments when uh, things just don't work out and you have to rethink everything, such as a baseball batter on a slump? Yeah. Is the guitar an ungrateful instrument? I don't know if it's the, it's the fault of the guitar or just <laughs> getting older or what, <laughs> what it is. No, it's, it's an always changing thing. What, one, one guitarist I, I, I have great admiration for and, and, and a lot of affection as a friend is Pepe Romero. And, uh, and I've learned a few things from him. And, uh, and at one time, I said, we're, we're running actually to him in New York and, I was, and we were starting talking about Rodrigo and I, and I asked him, you know, does it happen to you? that a passage that was always very easy, all of a sudden becomes very difficult. And there was a, was difficult, now it becomes easy. And I said, yeah, it's exactly how, how it is. And, it's, and that's kind of the beauty of it, and the difficulty, it's, a, it's an ever-changing thing. I mean, the body's changing, the mind is changing, everything, the relationship to, to, to the pieces is changing. And, 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 and that's, for example, you know, things that were difficult become easy, and things that were easy become difficult. And, well, regrettably, we've uh, run out of time, and uh, we hope to have Manuel Barraco again in the future. And we want to thank you for being here, Manuel. It was a great pleasure. Well, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll be back soon with another uh, program of our talent. I'm Juan Carlos Vera. Thank you.